from the Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock, this is Capital View with your host, David Goins. Good Sunday morning to you. Welcome into Capital View. I'm David Goins. Thanks for being with us, making us part of your weekend. Your two leading candidates for Attorney General, Democrat Nate Steele and Leslie Rutledge, will join us this half hour together. We'll get to spend a good portion of the show with them. But we begin with big newsmakers of the week and our political long table uh, with the Independent uh, Association of Colleges and Universities. Uh, Rex Nelson, David. editor of the Arkansas Times, Max Brantley. Thanks so much for joining us this yeah. morning. All right, well, let's start with debates. There were a few of those this week. Um, Rex, let's start with the two Senate debates. Is this everything we more or less expected? Were, were there anything from these from these two uh, interactions with Cotton and Pryor that that really kind of maybe changed the tide either way? I, I don't think so. I mean, you've got to remember we're in a race where we've been seeing television advertising for more than a year now. We've been seeing massive media coverage mm -hmm. for almost a year now. Uh, it would have taken an awful big mistake by one of these candidates to receive much attention at this point, mm -hmm. and there weren't any big mistakes. They pretty well stuck to their talking points. I doubt these debates this past week changed many voters, if any. Max, did the debates feel like a, just an extended campaign ad, or did you well, see Well, certainly in Tom Cotton's case, I, you know, I understand programming and mm -hmm. the need for him to reemphasize the connection he's drawn between Mark Pryor and President Obama, but I thought perhaps mentioning him 70 times in 40 minutes might might have been a little bit over the top. Max, we actually have a little bit on that. I'd advise uh, he hit 80 if I were well, advising him. Let's, let's, let's kind of <laughs> see what we have put together here. Mark Pryor's been voting 93% of the time with Barack Obama, and a vote for Mark Pryor is a vote for more of Barack Obama's policies. Yet Mark Pryor keeps voting within 93% of the time. They know that a vote for Mark Pryor is a vote for Barack Obama. And whenever Barack Obama says he needs Senator Pryor's vote, then he gets Senator Pryor's vote. But Senator Pryor and Barack Obama insist on doing things the old way. And that's another way in which Mark Pryor is a vote for Barack Obama. When he asked a question about ISIS, Congressman Cotton talked about Obama. To ask a question about the Farm Bill, he talks about Obama. You see a pattern? Yes. Clearly, Congressman Cotton is running against one man, but I'm running for three million Arkansans. Rex, some people pointed out the fact that, that Congressman Cotton brought up the president in, in most of his responses, certainly in the Monday debate, maybe a little more scale back in the Tuesday debate. But you talk to Cotton's people throughout this entire campaign, they say, look, this is what this election is about. We're, we're talking politics here. We're not yeah. talking policy. We're talking raw politics. 50% plus one. We're, we're talking winning, and that's a winning ticket in Arkansas, just as it was in the last election cycle in 2012, just as what, what it was in the 2010 election cycle, and we saw how well Republicans did in both of those previous I, cycles. I think the Republican Party has nationalized everything down to the quorum court level with Barack Obama, and they may be right, right. but, but I, I thought that the, the key point about this in this debate wasn't that you harm yourself by mentioning Obama. I thought he was so rigidly controlled that he did give Mark Pryor an opening for a strength that Mark Pryor does have, which he's sort of a decent guy. I mean, you saw a little bit more of a human side to Mark Pryor than these very scripted remarks. From Neither are magnetic, but perhaps no, not it gives, no, it not, gives, not, it not gives Pryor but, by comparison. But there, there was just there was just a softer edge to him that I thought if there was any personal magnetism that came out of this debate, you'd say, well, Mark's kind of a little more just more human. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Rex, you thought that? I, no, I was just going to say um, I, I, I agree. Mark, Mark Pryor is a, is a good person. I, I don't think this election is going to turn necessarily on on uh, who, who the best person mm -hmm. uh, or who's the most likable. It has in past Arkansas politics, but Max is right. This, this election has been nationalized sure. really more so than past Senate elections that we've seen here in Arkansas. I think one thing I talked about with, with you know, previous guests on the show was just kind of the homogenization of just, you know, whether you're getting your politics in Arkansas looks the same as Minnesota or other, you know, Idaho with this kind of this national perspective. Mm -hmm. um, back on the debates real quick, there was um, a part of the Tuesday night debate that, that got a little uh, attention f uh, from an answer that Mark Pryor had based on a question about definition of, of the middle class. Let's take a look at that. Well, again, I'd say probably up to 200,000. So there's different definitions, but that's my working definition. Senator Pryor must be the one who's hanging around with out-of-state billionaires if he thinks $200,000 in Arkansas is the middle class. And I think about a typical household in Arkansas makes about $40,000 a year. 
All right, this $200,000 comment, Max, does it well, have much traction? It, it was, no, I don't think so. It was an awkward comment. Uh, Mitt Romney said the same thing during the presidential campaign mm -hmm. that, that the middle class can, in some people's minds, go up that high. But it, it was a small gaffe. But I, th I think if you really want to look for gaffes, you need to examine issues. And, and I think that, that Tom Cotton didn't really answer the key question of the race, if you cares. So if you do repeal Obamacare, then what? Then right. what happens to 250,000 Arkansans? He avoided answering that question. I, I'd be the first to admit the fact that that happened is probably lost on most voters. But if you want to look for something with significance, that's a big question in public policy. Rex, your thoughts on kind of, you know, I, I think one thing from the prior campaign I got the sense was he was talking about when you talk about the Bush tax cuts and what, what the middle class is and who gets those cuts, that's where you get that 152, but he didn't mm -hmm. really exactly say that, so it kind of... Lynch right, but I, I go back to where I started, and it is I don't think these debates really affected that many voters. If one of these candidates were looking for the debates to turn the tide, mm -hmm. I think they'll be disappointed. And one reason for that is I would suspect that the audience that actually watched these debates were probably just a tiny percentage of, say, the audience that watched that famous 1972 debate between John L. McClellan and Mark Pryor's dad, David Pryor. And I bet, that, and I bet a lot of them were already decided. Well, here, yeah, that's the, okay. That anyway. we're watching, yeah. I, I, I want to go down History Road if we can, but 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 first on this this I, idea. I put in 50 minutes of the 90-minute debate, and then I went to baseball. I'll be honest right, with you. Right. Well, I'm there's you supposed know, to be an insider. It, it is October, so. Yeah. Um, but I want to I want to ask that you know the, the, the question is. You know these debates. Maybe the undecided voter will, will 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 come to a conclusion. In this race, given the fact it's gone on for a year and a half plus, where are these undecided well, one, people? One, they thing that, one thing didn't happen in this debate. Tom Cotton, as you may recall, wanted <clears throat> Lincoln Douglas style debates. He wanted right. a debate from one end of the state to the other, hours on end. He got a limited number of debates. And one thing that didn't happen, which which is what I thought Tom Cotton thought might happen, which was a devastation of Mark Pryor in the debate. That didn't happen. Mark Pryor did reasonably well on the issues. Yeah. Do yeah. undecided still exist? I mean, so, 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 because so, everyone talks about it. So, well, it's the end of it is nothing. The, it comes yeah. out of wash. That's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, they both went 12 rounds if it was a heavyweight fight, and it was it was a draw. Right. So, do you believe that there are still undecided voters out there, or everyone's made up their mind, and those who say they're undecided, they're, they're just not saying? David anything. Ramsey met an undecided voter. <laughs> he did. Yeah. And 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 the right. answers in that the he, funnel cake and, 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 from Arkansas. And the answers that he gave, it was like, oh no, it is really is that voter going to decide this election? <laughs> Please uh, did, tell me that's not true. Uh, well, I mean, I think, uh, would you say at this point, undecided probably translates to unengaged? I, I think more than winning over undecided, it comes down at this point to turning out those who are already yeah, decided. I, I, the cliche, to getting them to the the cliche of the it's year is it's about turning. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's, that's the cliche. But it's true. Well, probably <laughs> cliche true. Cliches sometimes are true. Yeah, Turn it, yeah that's true. true. Um, Voter ID, any thoughts on that ruling? I mean, the Supreme Court it was unanimous. I know there are two separate separate opinions, but, um, well, you know. Well, I told you so the minute the law was passed, and so did Mike Beebe, and so did anybody else who'd read the Arkansas Constitution. Right. It could not stand. Uh, interestingly enough, I, I don't think there's going to be an instant backlash about it. I, I thought that was a, I thought there was a risk to the Democrats in winning this case. I think there is some backlash. Well, no, I, I understand that people still... The polls show people favor the voter ID laws, even though there is no demonstration anywhere. Rex, what would the backlash look like? I, it's people who say, are saying this just defies common sense. Uh, we have to show our driver's license for all kinds of things. Look at all we have to do even to get on an airplane. You don't have to show a photo ID but on an airplane. airplane. But how's that translating to backlash necessarily? Yeah, I, don't think I, I, th I, think, uh, I, I think a lot of voters out there are saying, right. you know, this defies common sense. This is... Uh, uh, it, it, draw, it drives more people to vote a straight Republican ticket that might have earlier been thinking about maybe a Democrat or two but, here. But I think it was important that all seven justices of the Supreme Court voted, although in two different, for two different reasons, to turn the law over. And th 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 there was no doubt that this law was unconstitutional. Yeah, I'm not, ar is, is I'm not arguing issue, uh, the legal part of it. I'm arguing the political part of it. It was great timing for Republicans. All right, Rex Nelson, Max Brantley, uh, it's late in October, so this may be uh, the last one before the election. But uh, either way, this is going to be an interesting last couple of weeks. All no right. doubt. Rex Nelson, Max Brantley, thanks so much. All right, well, coming up after a quick break, Attorney General candidates Leslie Rutledge, Nate Steele, right here in studio debating the issues two weeks before Election Day. I'm David Goins. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Now it's our choice. Produce more oil and natural gas right here.
and create 1.4 million new jobs. Get involved at chooseenergy.org. This election, let's put America back to work. Ready or not, here at Cork, you can't hide. It's the season premiere of Grimm. You took the Grimm's powers. I did. We need to be careful. Then, it's the world premiere of Constantine. Who sent you? NBC Fridays. It's evil's turn to be afraid. We're all powerless against demons. Not all of us, Chief. The premiere of Constantine, following Grimm, this Friday, here on NBC. The proof keeps piling up. Millionaire banker French Hill only looks out for himself. When French Hill sold his bank, he took a big payoff. But employees were told they could be laid off. French Hill took millions in executive compensation. But workers faced a 30% pay cut. French Hill took profits and left people behind. French Hill's only looking out for himself. You can take that to the bank. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Ready at 22 and a half, now 2500. Little Red River Resort Auction, Friday, October 31st at 10 a.m. 100 Swinging Bridge Road, Heber Springs, Arkansas. 50 acre income producing property on the Little Red River. Waterfront home with boat dock. Eight waterfront manufactured home lots. Two RV parks totaling 143 spaces. Nine commercial buildings and development land for future expansion. Offered in six tracks and combinations. For more information, go to wilsonauctioneers.com. I have sold it, sold it, sold it. What could choosing to produce and refine more oil and natural gas mean to you? More abundant, affordable supplies of the energy your family uses every day. This election, get involved at chooseenergy.org. That's a choice that's good for everybody. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capitol View. I'm David Goins. We are joined right now by two candidates, leading candidates for Arkansas's Attorney General. Uh, to my left and TV right, uh, Republican Leslie Rutledge, thank you for joining us thank this morning. You. And uh, Democrat Nate Steele, thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome both y'all back to Capitol View. Um, let's start uh, with um, what we've seen in this campaign um, related to um, some of the um, thoughts and ads that have gone into this race. Um, Rutledge, uh, Ms. Rutledge, I'll start with you. Uh, your thoughts on how uh, perhaps your campaign has been portrayed in this race. How do you feel that's gone? We feel like it's going great. Our campaign is focused on the issues of protecting our Kansans from criminals and scam artists and overreaching federal government. You know, unfortunately, we've seen uh, the other side digging, dumpster diving, if you will, and, and digging up old emails and things that I didn't write and simply aren't true. And, and rather than being focused on the issues, there's only one candidate in this race who is willing and ready to fight President Obama and understand that that is the role of the Attorney General. And so we feel like the campaign's going great. All the polls are, that we have and internal polls are showing us up and the numbers haven't moved and we're, we're feeling great about it. Mr. Steele, your thoughts on the tone of the race? I think it's been a pretty fair race. I mean, certainly Ms. Rutledge has been in the news a lot for, for uh, related to voting issues and old emails and our work record and things like that. I've made it clear that we've done no opposition research. My campaign has not been doing any opposition research. That's come from other interested parties. Obviously, there were some folks in the primary that were very concerned uh, and that also ran opposition uh, ads against her. So that's nothing new. But we've, we've maintained a positive message. We've maintained a message that highlights my qualifications as a prosecutor actually trying the cases, uh, everything from murder and rape down to child predators and, and drug dealers. And I think that's important because we have such a serious public safety problem with parolees right now. And that's been my focus. We've got to stop seeing headlines every day about another parolee that's free, that shouldn't be free, that's victimized someone. We need someone focused on that, not focused on Washington politics, but focused on fix, fixing our criminal justice system here in Arkansas. Ms. Rutledge, since you brought up the email, I want to kind of follow up on that if we can for, for just, a, just a moment. Um, do you feel that is your, is your beef with the email, is the fact that people uh, discovered emails or, um, or the content of the email, I know one in particular uh, that deals with some, some language for a family in, in need of service, you've described uh, described that email as uh, what, what the term was, what country talk I think was the term. Well no, I, I didn't, just to be clear, I didn't describe it as that. Someone else described that to me just as someone else wrote that email. Just as someone else had written the email that the AP had run with and had to retract. And, Correct. And so what we've seen is just a uh, the media and Democrats 
digging up old seven-year-old emails that have nothing to do with this race because what they don't want to talk about is Nate Steele double dipping, taking, you know, being a state representative and taking a job as city attorney in his hometown in Nashville in violation of the Constitution. He can talk all he wants to about it being a statutory exemption. But just this week, David, we saw that the Supreme Court made it clear that if a, there's a constitutional prohibition against something, a statute cannot override that. A city attorney is in... Are you referring to the voter ID rule? Right. So you think that the voter ID decision by the Supreme Court applies to Mr. Steele's job as a well, part-time city well, what attorney? It, it just exemplifies for those watching that you can't create a statute and cite to a statute and say, well, if the Constitution pro, pro prohibits this, then therefore the statute allows me to do it. That's not the way it works. We even have a 2002 opinion by Mark Pryor that states that a sitting legislator may not be a city attorney and defines it. Mr. Steele says, well, I had a contract. Well, sure, he had a contract, but the contract was to be the attorney for the city of Nashville. So if it sounds like a duck, if it walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And that's what we're seeing. And his father resigned that job so the city of Nashville could then give it to him. It's just more good old boys, more of the same. And why the media is not covering that, I don't know, because citizens are tired of good old boys double dipping, having two jobs in violation of the Constitution. I have the Constitution right here that, that prohibits Mr. Steele from doing that. I'll take your word that's in your notebook. You don't, you don't have to pull it out. But uh, one of y'all two will most likely be the Attorney General, so give me an advisory opinion about uh, your, your job and her interpretation of... Uh, your position. There's just no question about it. I think it's laughable to have a Washington, D.C. lawyer attacking a, a Nashville, Arkansas lawyer that does work for the city of Nashville, a small town in southwest Arkansas. I'm really proud of that work. There's absolutely nothing in violation of that. As you know, David, I was one of the only legislators pointed out during the legislative expense reimbursement scandal to never accept any office reimbursement salary padding from the legislature, from my work in the legislature. I've never accepted reimbursement uh, for my job, my law practice, and, and representing the city attorney. I've taken absolute base pay in every public job I've ever had because my goal is to serve my community and serve my state and as a state as an AG I want to serve the state uh, in, in that capacity focusing on criminal justice so it, it's it's telling to me that I voted on thousands of bills I've prosecuted hundreds of felons and the only thing that they can find to attack me on is that I do work for the city of Turner, city of Nashville and, and Howard County Arkansas I think that's I think that's pretty telling well I'll be happy to talk about some of Mr. Steele's voting record He's the only legislator that didn't vote when given the opportunity to prohibit sex offenders from being at state parks. He's the only legislator to vote, to vote no against smoking in a car with someone 14 years younger. He has a record of not protecting children as a legislator. That's his voting record. This lawsuit that was brought by the RPA just pointed out the fact that Mr. Steele, a sitting legislator, is in violation of the state constitution by being the city attorney of Nashville. And rather than saying, you know what, it was wrong. I'll give you 30 seconds here, but we're going to go to a break, but go if you have something. My to legislative record has earned me the Legislative of the Year Award from every major law enforcement organization, the Chiefs of Police, the Prosecuting Attorneys, and the Fraternal Order of Police. Uh, Ms. Rutledge is manipulating my record while she hides her record at, F at DHS where she was terminated for gross misconduct behind an I was FOI not terminated. exemption. I'm, so there I you go again, to quote I'm my favorite president. I'm proud to have, have that record discovered, but we should both not. put our records out on the table and, and let, the, let the media and others uh, inspect them. Okay, let's stop there. Nate Steele and Leslie Rutledge, we are talking about the Attorney General's race. When we come back, we'll have much more. I'm David Goins. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. When women are coming out of a violent situation, they need legal counsel, medical care, housing. They need a lot of services, and they need someone to point them in the right direction. The Violence Against Women Act helps women get the resources that they need. When Tom Cotton voted against it, he turned his back on Arkansas women. I would tell Tom Cotton that there's no excuse for the choice that he made to not support Arkansas women and Arkansas families. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Ready or not, here at Coleman, you can't hide. It's the season premiere of Grimm. You took the Grimm's powers. I did. You need to be careful. Then, it's the world premiere of Constantine. Fridays, it's evil's turn to be afraid. We're all powerless against demons. Not all of us, Chief. The premiere of Constantine, following Grimm, this Friday, here on NBC.
What kind of a country turns its tax collectors into secret police? And what do you call a government that values its own survival above the rights of its people? A country where leaders act like mob bosses, attacking citizens with rules and restrictions they fear they'll never have the power to overcome. Where the content of your prayers is between you, your God, and your government. Our nation of laws is becoming a nation of corruption, where whoever has the power throws their punches while they can. Everyone loses under this type of lawlessness. So we must do now what we've always done as Americans, as good guys, speak out. No government agency has the right to attack its citizens with fear. We are the five million men and women of the National Rifle Association of America, leaders in the fight for freedom for all. Join us. You're watching Capitol View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capitol View. I'm David Goins. We have the two leading candidates for Attorney General joining us this Sunday morning. We uh, welcome back Leslie Rutledge and Nate Steele. Um, before we went to break, uh, Leslie Rutledge, you mentioned, I, you, I think you said de defamation or you weren't, you, explain what you were saying there at the end. Right. Well, when Mr. Steele makes an accusation that I was terminated from a job that I voluntarily left, that is outright lying and has no business in public officials. And but those, did get a do those, not rehire label right. attached, which you feel is politically motivated? Is that, is that what? Well, I don't know what the cause was because it happened 10 days after I left. 10 days after I left, my former bosses who are activist, liberal Democrats, Mart, Ball, rather Mart. Did they know you were active? Absolutely. They, they teased me all the time about being Republican. But they, vol they went in, Mark scratched it out. I meant to bring a copy of it today. Marked it out. So, But just perhaps, so we're clear, you haven't, you haven't decided to release any, any... Well, I don't know what's in those files, and I can't trust them. And so that's why I'm not going to go ask for them and release, because I don't know what those same people who changed my files 10 days after I left, what else they could have put in there. And perhaps Mr. Steele, is, are, is he condoning that a supervisor and state agency should be able to go and change someone's file 10 days after they leave? I had the opportunity of a lifetime to go work for my former boss, Governor Mike Huckabee. He could have been the next president. That's who I was going to work for. But instead, you know, my supervisors at DHS went in marked my file 10 days after I left, and this is the actions that he's going to condone as Attorney General to change someone's file. Mr. Steele, any thoughts? I'm not sure where the buck stops, David, but it doesn't stop with Ms. Rutledge. When she was cited for gross misconduct at DHS, she blamed her supervisors on some kind of democratic conspiracy. When she was uh, forwarded racially insensitive emails, she said it was country talk and blamed a friend of hers in, in some other office, even though she forwarded it five times. So I, I think as, as attorney general candidates, we should be held to a higher standard. The buck stops with us. We are the protectors of FOI as attorney general. And I think we should definitely be held to a higher standard, and the public should expect that from their candidates. Uh, while we've got time for issues here in the last 90 seconds or so, um, I think one thing the Attorney General deals with is, is capital punishment. I know I've asked both of y'all about that briefly, uh, but I want to know in, in, in a short amount of time, uh, Ms. Rutledge, I'll just start with you. Given where the death penalty is right now and the fact we haven't had an execution in nine years, what can be done to change that? Right. Well, anything? we need to sit down with legislators and have competent lawyers working on that. I believe that some of the legislators that had worked on the statute, and that's why it was challenged and thrown out, that we need competent lawyers working on that to make sure that when challenged in courts that it's upheld because we need to give those victims' family the closure that they need. That's what I talked about through the primary and through the runoff election. That's what I'll be talking about in the general. And I'm focused on issues that deal with the Attorney General's office and protecting Arkansans. Mr. Steele, um, your thoughts on that? If I heard you correctly, it sounded like you feel the law that was passed in 2013 wasn't well written, and you wrote it, right? Uh, Senator Bart Hester and I carried that legislation. It was actually uh, with the help of the Attorney General's office and several uh, law professors at the University of Arkansas. That's right, and that, that law has not been ruled upon by the higher courts yet. It's still, it's still in the courts, and I'm, I'm confident that we did fix the legal problems. What we have now is a practical problem, which is ascertaining the chemicals needed for lethal injection. That's not so much a legal issue, but a practical one. 
And, uh, and a logistics this, one. And I think this highlights another difference in the race. I'm the only candidate that's actually tried a capital case. I've sat down with the victims in these kinds of cases. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's why I ca helped carry the legislation to try to fix this problem. And so my background uh, is clear that, that as Attorney General, I'll do everything I can to make sure we have a workable lethal injection statute. Okay, we'll stop there. Leslie Rutledge and Nate Steele, we're going to wrap up this edition of Capital View in just a few moments. Come back, we'll finish this up. I'm David Goins. You're watching Capital View on Sunday morning. I'm Mark Pryor, and I approve this message. Only one Arkansas senator or congressman voted five times against disaster relief. Only Tom Cotton voted to raise the cost of student loans. Only Cotton voted to cut doctors for children's hospital. Only Cotton voted to kill the farm bill. Only Cotton wants to raise Medicare and Social Security to 70. Only Cotton wants to take your tax dollars to pay for a tax cut for billionaires. Only Tom Cotton puts his own ambition ahead of us. It at 22 and a half, now 2500. Little Red River Resort Auction, Friday, October 31st at 10 a.m. 100 Swinging Bridge Road, Heber Springs, Arkansas. 50 acre income producing property on the Little Red River. Waterfront home with boat dock. Eight waterfront manufactured home lots. Two RV parks totaling 143 spaces. Nine commercial buildings and development land for future expansion. Offered in six tracks and combinations. For more information, go to wilsonauctioneers.com. I have sold it, sold it, sold it. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. All right, welcome back to Capital View. David Goins with Leslie Rutledge and Nate Steele. Uh, let's let's kind of wrap this uh, discussion up. Uh, about 45 seconds. We'll start with uh, you, Mr. Steele, on on this race and in the last two weeks here. Well. I think the voters have a clear choice here, and they can. There's a big difference between act, actions and words. Uh, we both claim to want to protect uh, children, but I'm the only legis I'm the only person that's actually prosecuted these kinds of cases and worked on these issues in the legislature. We both claim to protect Second Amendment rights, but I got the endorsement of the National Rifle Association, and and I have support from Republicans and Democrats alike because my goal will be to make this state a safer, better place to live and raise a family. And there's no Republican or Democrat way to do that. There are just right ways and wrong ways to do it. And I've offered detailed plans on how to do it at my website, uh, natesteel.com, and we haven't heard anything uh, but generalities from the other side, so I'm anxious to compare some ideas. Ms. Rutledge. Sure. Thank you. As I've said from the beginning, I want to use my 13 years of experience practicing law to protect our Kansans from criminals, scam artists, and overreaching federal government. That's the role of the Attorney General. I'm the only candidate in this race willing to push back against Barack Obama. My opponent has said he's not interested. He calls it Washington politics. Well, it's not Washington politics. These regulations affect everyday Arkansans. My opponent has a record of not protecting children in the legislature. I protected children when I was at DHS. I protected children when I prosecuted cases in Lone Oak County. I will always protect the citizens of Arkansas against anyone who seeks to harm them. Thank you. All right, Ms. Rutledge, thanks very much. Nate Steele, Leslie Rutledge, two leading candidates for Attorney General. Of course, early voting. Starts tomorrow morning, so you can head down to your county courthouse and uh, get that fired up. Well, that is it for today's show. We'll be back next week with a whole new Capital View. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. There was a time when the name Pryor stood for independence. What happened? Today, Mark Pryor is just another vote for Barack Obama, voting with him 93% of the time. He supported job-killing cap-and-trade and Obamacare's deep Medicare cuts, a name that stood for integrity. Now Pryor's running a desperate campaign with an attack Time magazine called one of the most dishonest of the year. It's time to retire Mark Pryor. Crossroads GPS is responsible for the content of this advertising. My name's Alyssa, and I drive a 2015 Hyundai Sonata. People always ask me what kind of car it is. They think it looks so good. I test drove the Camry, and the Sonata went hands down on the look and price alone. It helps me be a safer driver because it's got lane departure warning and blind spot detection. This is my third Hyundai. I've stuck with them for a while, and I'm going to keep doing so. Now, lease a Sonata for zero down and $265 a month. Visit buyhyundai.com. Well, we don't ask for much uh, in return for our service, but it's wrong when a politician puts himself ahead of local firefighters and police. Patrick Henry Hayes raised taxes to increase his government salary. Again and again, Hayes said yes to higher pay for himself and city bureaucrats at the expense of taxpayers, firefighters, and police. Hayes is a career politician who only cares about himself, not us. I'm French Hill, and I approve this message. 
Proof keeps piling up. Millionaire banker French Hill only looks out for himself. When French Hill sold his bank, he took a big payoff. But employees were told they could be laid off. French Hill took millions in executive compensation. But workers faced a 30% pay cut. French Hill took profits and left people behind. French Hill's only looking out for himself. You can tell